good morning. He has no rival. He has no equal. Man, I don't know about y'all, but I was ready to worship a little bit more. I was ready to worship just a little bit. Is it just me? I don't know. It's the last Sunday of the year, and I said, God, we made it. <laughs> Lord, we made it through 2020. You've been there with us the whole way. And if it's just me going to celebrate and it's just me going to get excited, well, then it's just going to be me. But I'm just going to get excited because the Lord has carried us through. It's, I mean, come on. If somebody wants to shout, that's fine with me. We got something to shout about. Man, I don't know about y'all. I'm just ready to worship a little bit more. So anyway, I have to calm myself down just a little bit. Lord, help me, I pray. These dignified folks in the house. Woo, hallelujah, man. God's presence is here, and I am so thankful, and I'm ready to preach the Word of God. Are you ready to hear? Are you ready to participate? If you are physically able, can you stand for the reading of God's Word and turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. We're going to look at Mark, chapter 4 today, and we're going to look at the last paragraph of Mark, chapter 4. And we're going to learn some things today from the disciples going across to the other side. Everybody say, the other side. We're all going to the other side together. Are y'all going with me? Okay, that's, that's good. That's important that y'all go with me because we're going, I'm going to be with Jesus. Okay? He's going to be with me, and I'm praying that y'all going to be with me. We all be together as we go to the other side. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. It'll be on the screen behind me if you have your Bible. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. That day when evening came, so nighttime, he'd been out there all day. When evening came... Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, everybody say leaving the crowd behind. They took him along, meaning Jesus, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. That's going to be key in a little bit. There were some other boats with Jesus. A furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat so that it nearly swamped. That was just to tell you right there that uh, the waves were high. The wind was blowing. And on the Sea of Galilee, the waves can reach 5 to 10 feet. Because of the way it's the lowest freshwater lake in the world. And if you've ever been there, You've seen how the water and the wind can come up and the water is affected because of that northern end and how there's just kind of a, a spot there where the mountains on the, uh, the, the Golan Heights on this side rise up and that wind can wash through there. And I mean, when it comes through there, the wind and the waves can become furious just like that. And that's what happened. And that's what some of these sailors, these fishermen, they knew that. And it's nighttime. Keep that in mind. So that the boat was nearly swamped. Verse 38, Jesus was in the stern. He was in the back of the boat. He was sleeping on a cushion. He was all worried about it. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus got up. He yawned. He stretched. He rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Completely calm. Reminds me of the Red Sea. Departed, he parted the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea and they crossed over on dry ground. He said, quiet, be still. Now remember, there was big waves happening. So much so it was coming over the sides of the boat. He says, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down. It was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Verse 41, they were terrified and they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Can we look at one more verse? Chapter 5, verse 1. Man, this is, this is the shout verse for me. Then they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. 
I thank you, Lord, for the excitement that I have in my heart right now. Lord, to just talk about your word, to share your word. Lord, to just talk to your people today. Lord, about the peace that you give in the middle of storms. I pray today, Father, that, that all the people that are here today within the sound of my voice, whether watching online, whether they're right here in the room with us, I pray, God, that they would experience your peace, that they would experience your power, and that they would experience your presence, Lord, because you speak to our storms. And I thank you, God, that you still speak to storms. You're still in the storm speaking business. And I thank you, God, that you're here with us today. I praise you, Father. May your people be blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Be seated if you can. For most of us, 2021 can't get here soon enough. For most of us, 2020 was a year we'd like to most all of us forget. We have endured shortages of toilet paper. We have had to relearn how to walk up and down aisles of the grocery store. Early on, there was a man, y'all, and they put those, those uh, arrows down on the floor telling you which way to go up and down the aisles. And, and I went, down, I'd went the right way, and then I crossed over one because there's nothing I needed on that aisle. And so you go to the next one, and now you can't go down that one, right? You have to go all the way around and all the way back up. Well, there was something right there that I needed, just right there. And I thought, I'm going to be a rebel. <laughs> So I go and I get what I need and there's the guy, he turns, he's got this basket and he sees me coming the wrong way and I'm just taking like four steps, it wasn't a big deal and he was still like 20 yards from me and he just stopped and he just has basket and he's just looking at me like, you reprobate, <laughs> how dare you walk down this aisle like this and y'all listen, we've had to learn how to shake hands with, I don't know if we're chicken winging or if we're kicking each other in the toes, I don't know what we're doing anymore y'all, we've had to learn how to live life in a whole different way. Many of us have had to endure loneliness that we've never endured. Many of us, our minds have been darker than they've ever been. For some folks, the exercise of the loneliness and the depression that they have experienced has been almost more than they can handle. Counselors in the room today and those who deal with mental health will tell you that 2020 has been hard for a lot of people, y'all. Now, all the introverts, this has been the best year ever. <laughs> but we've missed uh, family time. We've, we've, missed some, have, we've had to postpone some weddings. We've had to do funerals completely different. We've, we've had to do a lot of things different. 2020, for most of us, we'd like to put it in the rearview mirror because we're tired, <clears throat> we're exhausted, and we're a little bit fatigued. And so for most of us in the room today, thinking about 2021, it's kind of an exciting thing because it's taken a toll on us. This year, if you'll remember, it started out with a lot of joy, started out with a lot of expectation, started out with, you know, just seemed like everything's just going to be all right. It's kind of like pregnancy. <laughs> all you ladies that's had babies before, you know, the first month of it, it's pretty cool. Second month, you know, Everything's going all right. The third, by, the third tri, by the trimester, by the end of the tri, third trimester, everybody, your legs are, are swollen. You're ready to put this behind you. You're ready for a new season. You're ready for that baby to get here. It kind of sounds like every Razorback fan that's in the room today, sometimes you're just ready to turn the page because there's always next year. There's always next year season. Now, I'm a baseball fan, and the, and the Hogs have done pretty good there, so save your shout. If you're a football fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even the Cowboy fans in the room know what I'm talking about lately. You're ready for a new season. You're ready for a new year. You're ready for something else. You're ready to put something in the rearview mirror because the joy is gone and things have been changed. Forever, we're all ready to get to the other side. But if we'll be honest, there's a lot to be glad about and there's a lot to be joyful about because the Lord has been with us every step of the way. We're still standing, y'all. We've got to remember what God has done for us, that he's provided for us, that he's been there with us, 
His presence goes with us and before us. And He is there every step of the way. And before we get our minds on all the things that have changed, why don't we start thinking about Jesus that has never changed? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I choose to go with Him because with Him, everything's going to be all right, y'all. That's 2021. We're going to go to the other side. Now today... We're all expecting something new, something fresh, something better. Is there anybody here? You say 2021's got to be better. All right, all four of you, praise the Lord. We got four people that's got a mustard sized faith. <laughs> all four of y'all happy that 2021's got to be better. But let me give you a promise. I could even be prophetic right here. There's going to be some more storms in 2021. Because that's life. There's going to be some ups, Charles. There's going to be some downs. That's just the way life goes. If you've lived long enough, you say, hey, I've never seen a pandemic like this, but I've certainly seen some storms in my life. Is that anybody here? Vic's lived long enough. He's seen a bunch of storms. If you live long enough, you're going to see some storms that you wonder if you're going to make it through. I'm here to tell you that the Lord is with us. That's where we find ourselves in the chapter, fourth chapter of, of Mark, of the Gospel of Mark, and I'm going to give you here in just the next few minutes some survival strategies to help you make it through 2021. Have we got any survivors here? Have we got any people who's ready to thrive in 2021? I'm going to tell you something. We're going to make it to 2021, and we're going to do get good because the Lord's going to be with us, and I'm going to give you some strategies from the Word of God from this text right here that we're going to be able to see how to make it in 2021. Are you ready? Chapter 2, let me, let me refresh you where we are in chapter 2. Jesus, he's in Galilee, and he's going all around the region. This is the area that he does 98% of his ministry. Most scholars and most theologians will tell you that uh, this area from over on Capernaum, this, this western, northern section of Israel, there's many people in the room today. I was there with Ed Huey, he, him and Vicky's here today. God bless you, Ed. Glad you're here. But I was there with him a few years ago, and we was over here on this Capernaum side, and then we went a little further to, to, to Magdala, and then we went a little further. We're up in the very northern tip of, of the, uh, of the uh, Sea of Galilee, and then over on his side is the Golan Heights. This is that area that Jesus had been traveling all over doing miracles. He had been healing people. He had been uh, driving out demons. He had been teaching the Word of God, and this is where he finds himself uh, with all of the scribes coming against him, and and they have been uh, wondering if he knows what he's talking about. They've been questioning his authority. Imagine moral, mortal men looking at Jesus, asking him if he has any authority. <laughs> They're talking about the word of God in the flesh. They're talking about Jesus Christ himself. And they say, well, we're not sure that you understand the Sabbath, Jesus. Jesus had to endure some people who thought they knew a whole a lot of things. They're challenging his authority. In fact, in chapter 2, in chapter 3, in chapter 4, all these people that the Bible calls the crowds or the multitudes, they all hear his words. They hear his teachings. They see him raise people from the dead. They're seeing him do all of these wonderful things that no one has ever done before. And the word about him is growing. And that's why there are multitudes. That's why there are crowds of people around him. They all want something from him. There's no time to relax. They're touching him. They're grabbing him because word got out that if you just touch the hem of his garment, that you will be healed. This is a, a time where there wasn't medicine like there is today, where the only hope they had was if they could just touch the hem of the garment of this man that's called Jesus. This rabbi, this teacher, this priest that has come, and now they're saying he's mysterious. They've watched him do all of these things, and now they've, more and more people are coming around. Kind of like those folks that never, they always only come around when they need something. Anybody got a friend like that? <laughs> are you that friend? I hope you're not. Praise the Lord. But uh, before I digress... All these people, they want something from Jesus. All these people, they're pressing in. There's crowds. And Jesus, by the time Mark chapter 4 rolls around, Jesus is tired, he's exhausted, and the crowd is there again. And they're all standing on the shore. In fact, if we look at Mark chapter 4, verse 1, how it begins, again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. That means he's done this before. Again, 
Jesus began to teach by the lake, the crowd, the multitude that gathered around him was so large that Jesus got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake. And while, and this was on the northern side, all, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge, Jesus just needed some room. Jesus says, boys, go, I'm, I'm tired. I've been teaching. I've been preaching. Go get me a boat. These people, these people driving me crazy. He didn't say that. But in my mind, I put myself where he was. Been driving me crazy. That's what it would have been. He says, go get a boat. I'll sit in the boat. We'll put an anchor down. And they can hear me speak because my voice will travel across the water. And everybody will be able to hear me. This is the scene. In fact, a couple of years ago, and Ed, I think this might have been the trip that I was there with you. I took a little video of this little spot. The spot that we're talking about because I didn't know, but I knew at some point I was going to be preaching and teaching on this. And I wanted to have a little spot that would put you in the spot so you would know exactly what it looked like that day. When they put on the northern side, and I'm going to run this video behind me just for a second. You're going to see this little spot on the northern side. And Golan Heights is over on the other side. This is where they was talking about going. That over on the other side, that's where they were going. And right where we were in that moment on that lake that day... It's called the Lake of Kinneret right now, but it's the Sea of Galilee. It's not really a sea. It's a lake. It's a big lake. But that little spot right there where that, uh, that little cliff comes down on that one side, that's, that is exactly where they were sailing because that's where the pigs ran down that little cliff right there when he, when he uh, sent all of the, of the demons out of that man in 2000, went into the the, those demons went into the pig and ran down that cliff in Mark chapter 5. Some of you never read it, and now you're going to go read it. Praise the Lord. It gave you a little bit of, uh, I want to know what he's talking about. And then if you'll look at the next picture, I've got a couple pictures here. There's the, the front of the boat, and we're headed to the other side. The only thing that was different that day than right here is it was nighttime. The next picture will show you one more shot of that place right there where the pig's in Mark chapter 5, where they made it to the other side of the place of the Gerasenes. Uh, I've got a couple more pictures of a boat. I want to show you the size of a boat in the first century. Several of you have been there with me. And this is a first century boat, the size of a first century boat. I'm not saying that that is the one that Jesus was in. I'm just telling you that is about the size of boats, of fishing boats of that day. They were not very big. One more, that gives you a little bit. That was just found like three or four years ago. So they excavated that. They found that in the mud. The, they had a, a drought, and the, the Sea of Galilee started to uh, recede. The water line did, and when they did, they found that boat. And I think that's pretty cool. It gives you an idea. I'm trying to put you in the spot where you would say, why are these guys freaking out so much? It's because they was in a little boat about like that. It couldn't have been too much bigger than that. That's a first century boat. That's pretty neat, isn't it? It gives you an idea of putting you in the boat where Jesus and some of the disciples were that day. Remember, Jesus gets in the boat, he teaches the crowd, and then he says to them, I need some space, and we're going to the other side. Jesus says, let's pass over to the other side, and he says, we're, I'm giving you the destination. You know where we're going. But he doesn't give them the itinerary. If you've ever traveled very much, you can have an itinerary, but it is subject to change. And if you've ever had to stay in an airport for 12 to 16 hours, it's uncomfortable. But it wasn't near as uncomfortable as the itinerary that changed that day for the disciples and for Jesus. That day, there was a, a great storm. They don't know what they're going to have to endure. All they know is they get in the boat to go to the other side. So the storm shows up out of the, out of the north right there. The wind, it can come a, a, a big storm in just a real short period of time. And they're fishermen in, in the group, and they know about that. So they have endured this many times. So this must have been a really, really bad storm for them to freak out like they did. All I know is Jesus says, don't, they say to Jesus, don't you care, this is verse 38, don't you care if we drown, Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The wind is blowing, the waves are crashing over the boat, and now the boat is almost swamped. The disciples start to freak out, and they say to Jesus, don't you care? <laughs> They're saying to Jesus, don't you care about us? 
in the boat. Y'all looking at me really quiet, but anybody y'all said, Jesus, don't you care about us in the boat? Have you said that the last year, Jesus? Do you care about us? While the disciples was freaking out, they're saying, Jesus, how can you be asleep during all of this? Jesus, how can you be in the back of the boat? Don't you care about us? Can't you feel the wind? Can't you feel the waves? Can't you feel the boat rocking? Don't you care? And I looked up what Jesus says. I looked this up in the Blue Letter Bible, and I have a, I have a, Strong's, uh, a, a Greek Strong's Concordance that tells you, and it's, it's 4623 in the Strong's if you want to look this up, what Jesus says to them right here, and I'm going to give you my best Greek. This is the best shot that I have, is see o pao. Not see a pothole. That's what my dad said last night when I told him this word. He said, see a pothole, and I said, no, no, see a pao. See a pao. It means silence, or it means to muzzle. Jesus literally muzzled the storm. With one word that he spoke, he literally made the storm stop, and he muzzled it. He silenced it. He stopped it in one word. Peace be still is what your translation says, but he said peace. He said muzzle. He said basically shut up. For all the little kids in the room, don't go around saying that. Jesus rebukes the storm, and he rebukes the disciples. Verse 40, he says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? He says, you're going to freak out. You're going to stress out. You're, 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 after all that you've seen me do, after all that you've experienced, after every time that I have provided for you, after every time that I've done all these things for you, and you've seen me open blind eyes, you've seen me do, drive out demons, you've seen me raise people from the dead, and you still question if I care about you, and you're going to freak out. The storm is going to cause you to fear. The storm is going to cause you to doubt. The storm is going to cause you to wonder if I am the Christ, you are my disciples. He's saying to each one of us today, the storm or the virus is going to cause us to fear. The virus is going to cause us to doubt. The virus is going to cause us to hunker down. The virus is going to cause us to take our eyes off of him. He's saying, I care about you. You mean you're going to let this thing right here keep you from being the person that I've called you to be and going the places I've called you to go and doing the things I know that you should be doing? He's saying this little wind, this little wave, this little turbulence, he's saying, you're going to listen to the news media. You're going to listen to the politicians talk and do the things, say the things that they say. You're going to let the news media drive you to a spot where you have so much fear that you take your eyes off of Jesus. Jesus, don't you care about us in the boat? And Jesus is saying, he stands up and he yawns and. <sighs> Shut up. See o pao. Peace. It's not in my notes, but I think it's important for me to say. There's many people who say, well, did God cause this cancer? Did God cause this storm? Did God cause this fire? Did God cause this? If God caused this, why would Jesus stand up and rebuke what God caused? God is not surprised, and he's certainly not confused. We know what causes this. Make no mistake about it, God didn't cause this. He didn't say storms would never come. In fact, he said the opposite. Trials will come. You're going to go through some things, child. Don't allow these things to cause you to doubt. Jesus is kind of saying, how could you be a disciple of mine and doubt me so much? He says, let us go to the other side. We have his word. He said, we are going to the other side, guys. We are going together. I got five minutes to tell you this. Anybody have some 
Faith that I can get through this in five minutes, I'm going to give you four points. I'm going to do it really fast, rapid fire. Are you ready? Are you awake? And are you ready? Here we go. Here's how we're going to get through 2021. Here's how we're going to get to the other side. we got just a few more days to endure, and we're going to put all that in the rearview mirror, and here's how we're going to get through 2021. Number one, Jesus, they left a multitude. We're going to leave the multitude. We're crossing over. We're going to leave the multitude. Everybody can't go where we're going. There could be some people in your life that you have allowed access to you that has caused you to doubt. There could be some people in your life that all they do is they drag you down. Everybody may not can go in 2021 to the other side with you. I'm not talking about your spouse. I have to be very plain these days. Some people only hear what they want to hear. If you are joined together, you are joined together. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but pastor, nope, no buts. There could be some people that you work with. May, they may not be able to go with you to the other side. You can't allow everybody access to your mind and access to your heart. Everybody can't go. There's some people in your life that holds you back. You, they keep you on the bank. They keep you scared. They keep you in doubt. They keep you turmoil. They keep you all torn up. They may not can go with you. Some people just can't go. Number two, you've got to leave the multitude because every smiling face ain't your friend. Every person you think's in your corner, they don't got your back. So just analyze the motives and analyze, are they the friend that they only come around when they need something? Well, they may not can go. So, number one, leave the multitude. You can't take everybody with you. Number two, you can't take everybody with you. You can't take everything with you. Leaving the crowd behind, verse 36, they took him along just as he was. Everybody say, just as he was. They took him just as he was. He didn't change clothes. He didn't go pack a lunchbox. He didn't go and change, change clothes and clean up and take a shower. They took Jesus just like he was. He was in the boat. They took him just like he was. You can't take everything with you. They left immediately. They didn't prepare for the journey. They just left. Excess baggage always slows us down. I'll tell you a quick story. When we go on mission trips, I take 20, 25 people with us at a time, and we'll go to a foreign nation, and we'll train for about 10 weeks before we go. And that last week or two, I always present them a packing list. There's several people that's been with me on many trips, and we give them a packing list, and I tell them, I say, listen, if it's not on this list, you probably don't need it. Don't pack too much because excess baggage slows us down. When we're trying to go through the airport. I don't need a bunch of extra baggage, and I don't need y'all bring 14 pairs of shoes. We're going to be gone for seven days. Two of those days are going to be in the airport. So at most, Matt, you only need five. Right? I tell the girls that, and I really give them a tough, I give them a really, really stern look, and it's always the guys that bring a whole suitcase of snacks. It's like, that's really going to slow us down. Excess baggage always slows you down. If you're going to Peru with me, it's a good idea to bring a good pair of boots because we're going to drill some wells. So all you need is a good pair of walking shoes and a good pair of boots. Isn't that right? Travel light. Only take what you need. Hebrews 12 says this. Let us throw off everything. Some translation says the weight that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for you, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. The Living Bible says it like this. Let us strip off anything that slows us down moving through the airports. <laughs> Let's strip off everything that slows us down or holds us back, and especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up. And let us run with patience the particular race that God has set before us. If you're going to the other side, if you're going to cross to the other side, if you're going to make it to this new season in life, you've got to lay aside some things that have been holding you back. You've got to lay aside the sins that have been holding you down, that excess baggage. You've got to leave some stuff behind. If you're going to move into 2021, you've got to leave the baggage that is weighing you down. How do we 
get through the storm? How do we get into 2021? You leave the multitude. You can't take everybody. You can't take everything with you. Number three, but you have to have somebody with you. You can't take everything, but you've got to, you can't take everybody, but you've got to take somebody. Here's who you need to take with you. You need to take the people that care about you. You need to take the people that call you and pray for you and encourage you. You need people in your life. You don't have to have everybody in your life, but you've got to have a few people that says, hey, I believe in you. I pray for you. You've got to have that person in your life, that Charles, that says, hey, at 2 o'clock in the morning, the Lord wakes them up and they call you and they say, you've been on my heart. I need to pray for you right now. Are you okay? That's the kind of people you need to take with you into 2021, the people that will stand by you because anybody can stand by you in the sunshine. But let me tell you something, baby. When the wind starts blowing and the rain starts falling, you need some people that's going to be with you and they will be your friend no matter what what they say I'm going to go with you and if you are falling down I'm going to pick you up and you falling down into that weight of that sin that's pulling you down I'm going to pray for you I'm going to be there for you I'm going to take you into 2021 I'm going to be one of them little boats out there with you I'm going with you that's the kind of people you need to take with you the multitude can't go but there were other boats out there with them because lone rangers don't make it Lone Rangers never met. My daddy told me a long time ago, said, son, it's the banana that gets separated from the bunch that gets peeled. You've got to have a few with you. You've got to have a few bananas with you, right? Leaving the crowd behind, this is verse 36, there were also other boats with him. You don't need a lot of people, but you've got to have some people. You've got to have some people because if you're a Lone Ranger, you're not going to make it. Make sure you're hanging out with people that does things that Jesus does. I noticed that there were other boats with him. They said, hey, if Jesus goes and gets a boat, I want to go with him. There are people saying, hey, if Jesus is doing it, I'm going to do it. You need to be hanging with folks that does what Jesus does. That's who you need to take into 2021 with you. So how do we get through the storm? Take somebody to stand beside you. And number four, you didn't think I could do it. I almost did it. You were right. <laughs> and number four, as I close, don't forget to pray. Don't forget to talk to Jesus. Jesus is the one that if we will talk to him, he will talk to our storms. We need to pray in 2021 like we've never prayed before. We're, we're going to come into, don't, y'all don't miss next week, Vision Week, Vision Sunday. We're going to share some exciting things with you. You say, well, how can you have vision in the middle of a pandemic? I say it's easy because if you've just got a little bit of faith, if you've just got a mustard seed of faith, if you just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, if you'll just do what you know that you need to do, and if you will pray, and if you will believe, and if you will ask God, he will help you to have new vision. Don't miss next week. We're going we're gonna to ta be talking about seven days of prayer. We're going to take this, this thing. 2021 is going to start with prayer, y'all. When you talk to God, he'll talk to the storm. They said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? They said, teacher, we're about to, we're about to die. They said, teacher, don't you feel the water? Jesus, don't you care that we are here? Don't you, don't you feel the storm? In the middle of the storm is when Jesus shows you who he is. In the middle of the storm is when he exercises and shows you what he can do. In the middle of that storm, when they talked to him, he showed them his power. He showed them his strength. He showed them his deity. He showed them his, his power and what he's able to do. You know, life in the middle of storms, it's kind of like a classroom. We're all wrapping up the last semester. The last semester of life is right here upon us. If somebody come out here and help me land this plane. That'd be awesome. The last semester is here. The classroom is called life. In the middle of the storm, Jesus will speak to your storm. And he will show you his power. He will show you his might. You say, Pastor, I, you know, it's, things are really tough right now at work. I, 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 I've got a really bad, hard time with my, my supervisor right now. My, my job's not going that great. Have you talked to Jesus? Because if you talk to Jesus, he can talk to your supervisor. Don't you care, Jesus? We're all about to die. You talk to Jesus, and he'll speak to your storm. 
He's able to do things. Prayer, listen, prayer changes everything. And in this last semester, these waning moments of 2020, in this very last days that we have with us, just a few hours remaining, can we be people of prayer that will fix our eyes on Jesus and say, Lord, I know you're with me. I know you're not going to forsake me. I know that you're going to carry me in 2021. I've come to tell you today that I'm full of faith. And God, he didn't bring us through 2020 to let us down now. You may have shown up here with hardly any hope. That's why you're here. Because God wanted to give you a renewed hope. He's still in the boat. He's still Jesus. He has never changed. He still speaks to storms. As every person bows your head, closes your eyes, I want to tell you that in 2021, God's going to provide for you. If there was a question, I wanted to tell you that he's going to comfort you. If you had a question in your mind, I want you to know that he's going to be there because he's Emmanuel. He's God with us. If there's anything I know, Jesus is going to be there right along with you. Just don't bail on him. If you've been paying attention, you've already been seeing God move. Because he's provided for you. He's comforted you. He's been there for you. He's, he's been there every step of the way. The best part of the story is that next chapter. This is the best start of the part of that story. Chapter 5, verse 1. Then they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. They made it. Y'all, we made it. And the Lord is going to be with us on the other side. Jesus was in the boat. He was still in the boat with them when they reached the other side. I want to pray for you today. As we go into this other side, as we welcome in 2021, you say, you say Pastor Darren, I, there's, there's some, some things that have been attached to me. They're weights, they're, they're so-called weights that have weighed me down. I need to leave some things in 2020. I don't need to carry them into 2021. I've got some excess baggage. I've got some sins in my life that, according to Hebrews, they've been slowing me down. They've been keeping me from my destination. If that's you, just ask for forgiveness of those sins right now. Ask him. Say, Father, forgive me. Release those things th from me that I may be able to walk into 2021 with a newfound freedom in you. You say, Pastor Darren, there's, there's an area in my life that I know I need to do better in. In fact, it's an area of my life that, if I'll be honest, Never been that great in. I need to pray more. I have a feeling in 2021, we're going to need to pray more than we've ever prayed. If we're going to reach this city, we're going to have to pray that God is going to help us do it. And if there be anybody so bold to say, Pastor Darren, I'm going to be like you. I'm going to join you. I'm going to join you in prayer in 2021 like I've never prayed before. I'm going to pray like I've never prayed before. I got my hand up. Is there anybody you join me today? And you say, Pastor Darren, I'm going to pray. I feel convicted in my life. I need a daily discipline of prayer, and I need to do this in a, a whole new way. I need to spend time with, in, with God in prayer. I got my hand up. I'm a man of prayer. I pray, but I need to pray more. If we'll all be a little bit honest, we all need to pray just a little bit more. Thank you. Put your hands down. I'm going to call us into, into this new year. I'm going to call us into a time of prayer. We're going to come to this church. We're going to come corporately three times a day. We're going to have this sanctuary open, and we're going to pray. And I'm going to call people to come to this place to get on their knees and pray before the Lord at what God is going to do in 2021. Can I pray for you? Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Father, for your presence is here today. I thank you for your people. I ask you, God, as we put 2020 behind us, as we put it in the rearview mirror, God, that we would look before, we would look ahead at the things that you have for us, that we would not be 
carried down that the weights and the sins of of this world would hold us down anymore, that we would run into 2021 with a newfound vigor, with a, a new perseverance, a new discipline in prayer, that we would lean in towards you. I pray, Lord, that you would cause this church to be a house of prayer. Renew in us, Father. Renew us, Lord, a new passion for your word. In Jesus' name I pray.